Now I'd like to call on our only subcommittee member who's been in space, Senator <laughs> Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I had a couple detailed questions, and then the chairman asked both, both of them. So I'm going to go a little bit different, uh, different approach here. So um, to the ranking member's question, you um, talked about that uh, there's a little bit of a deterrent by putting something at a lower orbit, I think you said. Why is, why is that? Why is, is it more likely that an adversary goes, goes after something at geo than it is if they are at a lower orbit? If this sounds at all like I'm lecturing an astronaut, I promise I'm not. <laughs> So the, it's more than just the orbital regime. In low Earth orbit to provide the coverage, you have to have a vastly greater number of satellites. Yep. Uh, dozens instead of, from geo, you can have a single orbit that mm -hmm. would look at a third of the Earth. So by going to the low Earth orbit, we're buying smaller satellites and more of them. Oh, okay, it's the numbers. More satellites creates yeah. a targeting problem. Which one do you want to shoot down that you think is going to be the, the problem for the mission? Yeah, it's just more targets. Proliferated it's more tar LEO. So right. more, they, they got to shoot, shoot more rounds. A lot more. To take out the capability. So much more that I think the escalatory threshold is raised to the point where they probably wouldn't. Wouldn't do it. Okay. Okay, that's helpful. Uh, General... Of the NRO, Air Force, Space Force satellites um, that we put into orbit, um, what percentage of those is Space Force responsible for the, you know, the contracting, the, the manage, management of the, you know, the operations to, to get these to their targeted uh, orbit? Compared to the NRO? Yeah, What's well, yeah, like what percentage do you have? I, sir, I... I, 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 let me get back to you with the so, But the NRO, the NRO has a number of constellations for its mission set. We have, I'm, I'm trying to think if there's any examples. We have the vast majority of Department of Defense satellites okay. that have now migrated those missions. But not all of the Department of Def Defense satellites. I, I always hesitate to say all, uh, okay. but, um, but I'm struggling to think of an example. And, and how many launch providers do you have that you contract with? currently to get those satellites into orbit? Two. And those are? Uh, ULA and SpaceX. SpaceX. And, th and actually, for demos and other things, we've contracted uh, other uh, providers as well. I can get you the full number. And, and uh, to date, uh, while you've been involved with this, are we seeing you know, typical kind of success rates and safety records from both companies? Absolutely. Okay. And no identifiable you know, problems um, with that you, that you feel puts uh, our satellites at risk? No. I mean, it's been a while since we've had you know, an accident. I mean, I saw one a long time ago, an NRO satellite, actually, that uh, happened to be down at the Kennedy Space Center, watched this thing blow up right after liftoff. I was on console out that in, happened? in California. Yep. I just walked out of crew quarters, saw this, wasn't even expecting it, saw this rocket launch and then explode about... 15 seconds later. Something you never want to see. Yeah, so it's great that we've, we've gotten better at this. And, uh, you know, SpaceX has a, uh, I'd say, a pretty remarkable, you know, record of, of success, UL, ULA as well. We just need to keep that going. Sure. I think it's important to be, um, you know, just constantly trying to look ahead and seeing what that next, you know, failure mode is and make sure you have the workforce that is really tracking this stuff closely because, you know, some of these assets are in the billions, billions of dollars, as, as you know, General. Sure. So um, I've got another question. Um, well, actually, I do have about 50 seconds. So let me – so Space Force has been around now for a couple of years. Um, I think maybe three years. Is that right? A little over three years. A little over three years. And some of the Guardians incurred about a two-year commitment – when they transferred from the Air Force or from an, uh, uh, another service, right. they're coming up on the end of that time. Are you seeing a good, you know, reenlistment rate for the enlisted ranks and officers that are going to stay on? Yeah, I, I think the, day, the the final assessment is still out a little bit because we want to see. I want to see it all play out, the full cycle play out before I really commit to this. But I'm, I'm encouraged so far, 
and I think we're providing the kind of challenges that the workforce is looking for. And so I'm, I'm still hopeful that we're going to be at, at good retention numbers, but we probably need to let this full summer cycle play out before we judge. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.